Well, good evening. Welcome to Indian River Baptist Church. Grateful you have tuned in tonight. Encourage you to like, to share, to comment. Let other people know that we have gathered this evening, and I encourage you to uh, let folks know that you're here. You know, make a comment or something uh, so we can be praying for one another. Uh, I'm so grateful uh, for this opportunity to open God's Word, and we'll do that in just a few moments. Just remind you of a couple of uh, announcements. You know, this past week I, I mentioned uh, about meeting our goal for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Just so grateful we did. Uh, we exceeded that by about $25, $26, I believe it is. Uh, so, so praise the Lord for this. Uh, that's a tremendous praise. Also this past week we began a new sermon series uh, called Harvesting Spiritual Fruit. And we're going to be going through the fruit of the Spirit, but also the works of the flesh. And that we're to walk by the Spirit. Why? So we do not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And so if we are a believer in Christ, we're going to be focused on the fact that we need to give evidence of that. We need to, to show forth of that. You know, being a disciple of Jesus is more than just being a church member. Because uh, it's, it, it's definitely very possible, unfortunately, for someone to be a church member but not necessarily be a disciple of Jesus. But if you are a disciple of Jesus, you should be a church member. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at those kinds of things as we go through this sermon series. I encourage you to memorize that passage of Scripture, Galatians 5, 19 through 23. Uh, you may think, whoa, that was an awful lot of information. Uh, but you know, take a little bit at a time. You don't have to memorize it all in one sitting. Uh, spread it out. Learn a little part of it. Then the next part. And next thing you know, you'll have the whole thing. And just use that, not just to have information, but take that word in so that your life is transformed. So that we will, what? Display the fruit of the Spirit. So that we will be conformed to the very image of Jesus Christ. And so again, uh, thankful for this opportunity together. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to open God's Word. Heavenly Father, I, I praise you, Lord, and thank you for this evening. Thank you for each person who is tuned in and will tune in. I pray, Father, you uh, open our minds and hearts to your word so that, Lord, we would understand that we are the body of Christ, that the church is the body of Christ who is the redeemed people of God. And, Lord, it's all about you. It's not about us. Lord, too often we make the focus upon ourselves. So, Father, I pray uh, that you would strengthen our hearts. Lord, just guide us into and, and be magnified and glorified. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Well, just to encourage you, hold on. Uh, <clears throat> just want to encourage you that as we go through this uh, passage of Scripture tonight, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. So while you're turning there, uh, stay tuned to the end. I'm going to show the testimony of that young man named Malachi. If you remember on Easter Sunday, we showed Malachi's story, a young little boy who ended up with some can with cancer, uh, ended up taking his life. And then last Wednesday night, if you saw that, I gave the other part of his story in the sense that all the people who came to know Christ as a result of his testimony, of the result of him sharing the gospel with individuals. Well, tonight, if you'll hold on, I'm going to actually at the very end show his testimony, this young boy who before he passed away, spoke of the hope of Jesus Christ, spoke of the joy that he understood in following Jesus. And so stay tuned to that at the end, and then we'll have our, our time of prayer. But I wanted to real briefly look here in Ephesians chapter 4. Last week I was in Lynchburg. I have gone back to school for some studies and spent the week there uh, doing class in the morning, writing papers at night, and my brain may be just a little bit fried, but that's okay. And, but one of the concepts that we talked about last week was that the body of Christ is the church. And, you know, too often uh, we mistake that. We think, what is the church? You know, and a lot of times we talk about I'm going to church as if it's a place, it's a, a building. And, you know, in our modern uh, our modern way of phrasing things, we understand what you're saying. But technically speaking, we know the church is not a building, right? We know that the church is the people. 
And that is how I've always typically said that. Just to make the emphasis, it's not the building, it's the people. But I think there's a distinction we need to make, uh, and it's this. The church is the body of Christ, who is the redeemed people of God. Do you see the difference? The first way we would say the church is not a building, it's the people. Who are we putting the focus on? Us. I mean, we would say, yeah, it's the saved people, it's the people who believe in, but really we've put the focus upon ourselves. But if we say the church is the body of Christ, now the emphasis is on Christ, the body of Christ. Have you ever stopped to think about the fact that when the eternal Son of God left heaven and came to earth, he added humanity to his deity. So the eternal Son of God enters into time and space and he becomes like one of us in all ways except for what? Sin. He has never sinned, never will sin. Uh, and so... Because of that, He is our Redeemer. Because of that, He is the spotless Lamb of God. He was here, and then we call that what? The Incarnation. The Son of God. God in the flesh. God is here. People could see Him, could hear Him, could touch Him. He could touch them, which He did, like laying His hands on their eyes and different things to, to bring healing to individuals. But now Jesus has ascended to the Father in his resurrection body. And he is interceding for us. He's at the right hand of the Father even now, interceding for us. But guess what? His body is still on the earth. Yes, his resurrection glorified body is in heaven, but his body is still here. The incarnation, in a sense, continues through the church, through his redeemed people, through what? The body of Christ. We always say we are to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. But have you ever really stopped to think that that's a reality in a sense? When we go in the name of Christ, when we perform ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit, who is it that is working through us? It's Christ. And it is Christ touching that person. When we go, it is Christ who was going to them. A perfect example of this is in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9 when it says that Saul was on the road to Damascus, and guess what? He encounters Jesus, and Jesus says this to Saul, 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 why are you persecuting me? Jesus is saying this, but Paul, or Saul, who was he persecuting? People, the redeemed people of God, the body of Christ. That's who he is persecuting. So this whole concept of the fact that we are the body of Christ should change the way we look at church, the way we relate to one another. Many places in Romans chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul gives an extended definition and analogy of the church being what? The body of Christ, that we are His body. But here in Ephesians, I'm going to read a couple passages which reminds us what we're to be about shows us what we're to be doing as the body of Christ. So in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And so he goes through all those, there's a one, and he starts with what? There is what? One body. I'm talking about what? The, the body of Christ. And what are we to do as believers if we understand this concept? The church is the body of Christ. Drop down to verse 11 uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. It says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. To what? Build up. So God has given gifts to the church. And we talk about the fact that everyone has a spiritual gift. Everyone 
the moment of salvation, they receive a gift from the Spirit to be used to what? Build up the body of Christ. Not build up yourself, not edify yourself, but to be used to build up the body of Christ. So if everyone has a gift to be used to edify the body of Christ, let me ask you, what is your gift? What has God equipped you with so that you can be a blessing to the congregation? You can be what? A blessing to the church. That's what we're to be about. We make church about so many different things. A lot of it is culturally driven. We need to get back to the Word of God and understand that we are His body and that He has placed each of us individually in His body for the working of the whole body, that, that we would see His body on display in this world. You see, the local church is the visible expression of the body of Christ. Ultimately, God knows who belongs to Him. And can false believers come into the church? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's what the New Testament was written. A lot of those letters to warn against false teaching. Uh, always going to be wolves in sheep's clothing. Jesus talked about them too. But you know, uh, so in that aspect, God is the one who sees and He knows who truly belongs to Him. But if we truly belong to Him, then we're going to gather as the body of Christ. As we gather as the body of Christ, so that the world will see Jesus. Not see us, but see Jesus. Think about this. How many people think that they can be a follower of Jesus and not be associated with the church? And not be associated with the body of Christ? Think about this. If you were to take, I heard it, the illustration put this way. If you see my hand here, you know, it's amazing what you can do with, with hands. You know, the opposable thumb and all that. It's, it's amazing. You can pick up small objects. You can hold on to something. You can hang, pull yourself up. I mean, there's so many things. Hold tools, hold a paintbrush, write different. It's amazing what you can do with your hand. And you can sit there and say, wow, that's, that's pretty neat what you can do with you. In fact, they have a whole industry out there, hand models. That's all they are. They just show their hand, you know, holding stuff, right? But if I were to cut this hand off, and it were to lay over there on my desk or lay on the floor, and you saw my hand cut from my arm laying over there, what would you think of that? Ooh, that'd be repulsive. That would be disgusting. That, that hand that was so functional and could do so many things is now severed. It's cut off from the body. It, it's the wrong picture. And so when people sit there and think, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to be part of that. I don't even like those people over there. Why should I go? Well, that's because if you truly belong to Jesus, you're part of his body. And you need to be part of a local expression of Christ. Why? It's to build up the body of Christ. If he is giving gifts to the church, you're gifted to be sitting at home, right? On your own and having no fellowship. Now, I recognize that right now some people are sitting at home because of COVID. Totally understand that. I realize that some people sit at home because they physically can't get to church. If they, they have a desire and they want to, but they physically can't. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the people who willfully choose to say, I don't have to be part of that. I, I don't want to be part of that. Then need to check, are you really part of his body? Are you really placed in the, the body of Christ? Because the whole purpose is what? To build up the body. That's why we're part of his body, is to build up the body. And Paul goes on to say this in verse 13. It says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of stature of fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom what the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. If you are a believer, you are placed in the body of Christ for a purpose that's beyond you. We're, we're placed in the body of Christ to bring glory to God. So what is your part? What, what is your part? You may not may say, I'm not really sure what it is. Well, I can tell you this. I know it's to pray. <laughs> I know it's to give. 
I know it's to, to go and, and share the gospel. These are basic things that are applied to all believers. But there are spiritual gifts that God has given to us. And they're either a speaking gift or they're a serving gift. One way or the other. So it could be involved in teaching, proclamation, uh, ministry. Again, all of us are called to proclaim. But there are some people who are equipped and gifted that way. We're all called to serve. But there's others who they, they serve. And they serve. And again, it's not for their own glory. It's for the glory of God. So I just want to encourage you as we go through this sermon series, Harvesting Spiritual Fruit, that we must be connected to the vine. We must be connected to the one who is the, the body. But the imagery used in John chapter 15 is, you know, he is the vine and we are the branches. And again, if a branch is cut off, it's no good. It's useless. It, it doesn't serve its intended purpose. We're to trust in Christ and we're to receive him and when we do he gives us a gift to be used for the what the building up of the body of Christ it's not my job to to do all the building my job is to equip you the saints to do the what work of the ministry which what does what builds up more and more the the body of Christ we're to each do our part and no one part is better than any other part that's the beauty of it all, because who is the head? Jesus. Isn't it amazing that from your head, there are nerves that go where? To every part of your body. And I think we need to be connected to the head. If we're not connected to the head and the signals don't go to the head and back and whatever, uh, then that's not a good thing. We're to be connected to Christ. So, as I mentioned, there's a testimony I want you to see here the young man named Malachi and you're going to see that for him John 15 5 was a very important verse and I just want you to listen to his testimony and I pray if, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or maybe you know someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ take them let them watch this testimony let them let them understand that there is hope in the gospel of Jesus so let's watch this and let's be encouraged Hi, I'm Alka Russell. I'm, a, I'm 12 years old. I'm in sixth grade. I go to Sherwood Christian Academy. I love playing goalie for a wreck and my dad coaching me. Uh, I, lo I always love going to the beach and looking for shark teeth. Um, I always love playing video games <laughs> and playing with my brothers outside. Some of my favorite memories are like when we had the Nerf gun wars in the house and around the house. The tickle fights that we'd always have on the couch. Those are fun because we'd always end up getting out of control. And then we all get out of control. <laughs> our dad always loves to play sports with us. And he coaches our recreational team. And he plays Nerf gun wars with us. He plays the Xbox with us. He makes my lunch every day to go to school. He helps a lot. Some of the things I love about my mom are she always laughs. So it always makes us laugh if we're having a down day. Um, my mom is full of surprises. We'll be in the car and she'll see we're having a bad day. She'll be like, wanna go to freeze? Let's go to freeze. So we'll go to freeze. Like, she'll stick a note in our lunchbox every once in a while, talking about how much she loves us. I want to say I was about six or seven, and I heard, I heard Cameron talking about Christ and how cool it was. And so I come in the living room, and I'm like, ooh, I, I want to talk about this. I want to do this. And her, my parents are like, you're not ready. So I go back to my room. I uh, finally got to the point where it was at a concert at our church and I felt the Lord just calling me and I went down and got saved and then I got baptized that night. When I got saved, I didn't really have a full understanding of the Lord, but then when I got cancer, it really changed my view of what uh, the world is. and how we need the Lord. My favorite verse is John 15, 5. 
I am the vine, you are the branch. Whoever abides in me and I in him shall bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So apart from Christ, I can do nothing. But I was trying to live my life and my full strength and my strength, and it wasn't getting me anywhere, literally. I'm wheelchair band now. But the Lord has really helped me get through this and fight through this with a good attitude. And the Lord is never going to leave you or forsake you. He's got your side, so don't give up on Him. The Lord knows your every breath. He knows your first breath and He knows your last breath. Just trust in the Lord. He has me in this situation for a reason and a purpose, and I'm going to do what I, whatever I can to help fulfill this or do what the Lord wants me to do. The reason I have hope in Christ is because I have a relationship with Christ and I'm permanently saved, which means I have asked the Lord to come into my life to help me live like the Lord because I, I'm a sinner and without the Lord, I can't do anything. So I have asked the Lord to forgive me for my sins and I believe that He died on the cross for my sins and that three days later He rose from the grave to save me from going to hell. So I have a chance to go to heaven and I have a hope and a future. As Jeremiah says, um, I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So I know there's a future for me. I just have to wait for the Lord to give it to me. So I'm, I'm having a good attitude through this because I know there is a future. And I know that I could die, but I know if I do die, it's for the glory of God, and that was His plan for my life. I don't want to live my life on earth just waiting to die. I want to actually spread the gospel with other people so that they don't, so that when they die, that they don't go to hell and suffer the rest of their life like they're doing on earth, but even worse. But I know that when I die, I'm going to be in heaven with a new body, with everything new. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to have all my strength. I'm going to be running around in heaven. <laughs> uh, and I won't have my, I won't have my sinful body. And I know that when I die, I'm going to be face to face with the one who created me and gave me a purpose on this earth. And I'm going to be on my legs walking and running and enjoying heaven. What a, what a powerful testimony. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we come before you so grateful that this young man is in your presence now. And he had this hope while he was here. And his parents have this hope. Lord, I pray if there's anyone who is listening to this story tonight, that, Lord, they don't have that assurance that, Lord, they would trust in Christ. Lord, they would turn from sin and turn and embrace Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, I want to live for you, just like this young man did. He wanted to spend every moment that he could talking about Jesus. That's what we're to do. We're not just to just believe and just let it just be up in our brains. We're to, we're to trust. So, Father, I pray if there's anyone that just needs to trust Jesus in these moments, that they would do so. That they would simply say, Lord, I surrender to you. I, I know I'm a sinner. And I know that I need to forsake my sin. And I know I need to trust in Jesus Christ. And I may not fully understand, but I know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So I surrender to Him and say, wherever you lead, whatever you want me to do, Lord, that's what I will do. And so, Lord, if there's someone that that's their desire, that, Lord, first they let someone know, then, Lord, they would follow through to be baptized as an expression of their faith. And that, Lord, they would seek to, to grow. And if they don't have a Bible, Lord, we can give them a Bible. Lord, I just pray that you work and move. And, Lord, for those that are saved, may they just be encouraged by this testimony, knowing that in Christ there is hope, knowing that in Christ we can trust, knowing that in Christ we do. We, the plans you have for us are to prosper us, to give us a future and a hope. So, Father, we thank you. And Lord, we praise you. And we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. God's people said, Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in this evening. I encourage you to come this Sunday again as we continue in our sermon series, 
harvesting spiritual fruit. Uh, we're going to be looking this week at the works of the flesh. Notice how that verse starts. Now the works of the flesh are what? Obvious. And, uh, and hopefully after studying through these, memorizing this passage, you're going to begin to see the works of the flesh. And I'm going to encourage you, don't necessarily look for the works of the flesh in someone else. Look for them in yourself. And, and when you see them, repent and say, Dear Lord, forgive me. Thank you for your cleansing. And also the same thing, when we uh, get to the fruit of the Spirit, you know, Actually, look to see, do I have the fruit in my life? Is, is that love and that joy and that peace, is it there? So I'm encouraged by the Word of God. I hope that you are as well. Again, thank you for tuning in this evening. All right, so let's say our vision verse and then we'll be dismissed. Let's go ahead and say this. Declare His glory among the nations. We get to do this. So God bless you. You take care. Bye-bye.